we're back, Stripe Show Podcast, on a Thursday. I'm your host, Travis Fulton. Thank you for making us part of your day. Shaheen Nakjavani, who uh, does the podcast for me from time to time. He's got a new studio up in Canada. We're having some audio issues uh, right now. So you're going to be stuck with me today, but I've got a lot to talk about as, I don't know about you, my head kind of exploded yesterday with Tim Tucker. That was one of the best podcasts that I think um, we've done in quite some time here on the Stripe Show podcast. Uh, Very, very interesting, his putting tool, which I'm going to bring back up today, and I've got some further thoughts on it. And look, all of you, or most of you, were very intrigued by it as well. I have received a lot of DMs, texts, email, you name it, uh, on that device. So we're going to talk a little bit more about that. And I'm going to give you a few thoughts and an opportunity to do two things with it. One, to name it. (laughs) It doesn't have a name yet. And secondly, to get one. All right. And and a little bit more maybe on how to use it because, um, you know, look, it's it's one of those tools that you have to, I think, um, have a few uh, understanding of a few things that's going to help you utilize it and be very efficient with it and learn from it and make good decisions when lining up your putts. And I'm going to tell you right now, I've been in this business a long time. I'm not a big swing device gadget kind of guy. Um, I don't use much when I teach, but I was very impressed with this tool yesterday and I'm certainly very much behind it. You know, Tim Tucker, of course, he was, Bryson's long-term or, or long-time caddy and uh, he's brilliant you know he, he's a deep thinker and this is a tool that makes a lot of sense and is gonna help amateur golfers all over the world make more putts before we get to that a little update here on the leaderboard Charles Schwab challenge at the colonial Patrick Reed folks is tied for the lead at four under with Scotty Scheffler and wait for it who was the guy on Tuesday that I told you is back? And his caddy confirmed it. He texted me during the show. Webb Simpson <laughs> is four under, folks. He is back. Webb Simpson's going to win this. And I've got him at 40 to one. No, maybe 45. And uh, it's going to be a wonderful Memorial Day weekend as I'm looking down the board. There is my other guy, Stewie Stinks, two under through three. I've got him at 135 to one. We're on a heater, folks. We made some good money last week, decent the week before that. Let's have another good week this week. The Memorial, of course, is next week. Uh, Then we go RBC Canadian Open and then the U.S. Open. Quick turnaround time. A lot of good stuff coming here on the Stripe Show podcast. We'll get Shaheen, it looks like, on the show for a special Monday Memorial Day edition. I've got a lot of things that I want Shaheen to break down. Very smart young teacher. Does a great job, I think, with different swing models that are out there. I've asked him to break down Justin Thomas, his upright lead arm, what we need to know about lead arm depth. I've asked him to talk about Will Zalatoris' interesting wrist angles and how he goes from flexion to extension on the downswing, which you don't see a lot. Speaking of Will Zalatoris, I have his short game coach coming on next week. His name is Josh Gregory. He also works with Patrick Reed. That is going to be a good one. That is going to be a good one, folks. Josh Gregory next Thursday, I believe. Froggy's back. And uh, we've got a lot of tour players lined up for you. So thank you for being here. Stripe Show Podcast, doing well. Make sure you subscribe. Make sure uh, you leave us a comment and a ranking. It goes a long way. Way so PJ Tour is underway. Kevin Na two under. Chad Ramey two under. Chad Ramey having a nice season. Spent some time with him up at Hilton Head, and uh, very accurate driver of the ball. Not real long, but having a nice season. Charlie Hoffman has officially joined the PGA Tour once again. He's two under through four. There's Daniel Berger. He eagled the first hole. He's two under through one. And on down the list as they get started in Fort Worth. Big fan of Fort Worth, Texas. Spent some time there over the years. And uh, I really, really like that place. Now, 
Yesterday, Tim Tucker was on, a lot of feedback. I want to talk just a little bit more here about this tool right here. I'm going to bring it back up. This tool doesn't have a name, folks. So what I need you to do is tweet me, Instagram me, <laughs> Facebook me, whatever, DM. Send me a name. And if you're the name of this tool, device, aid, whatever we call it, if it becomes the name of this object, then you're going to win a prize. And Tim is asking for the audience to, to share what we think we should name this. Not what I think, but what he, Tim would name this. And it's interesting because when I look at this thing, yes, the first thing, it's a ball mark, right? You're going to set it down. It's a ball mark. So you can pick your ball up and clean. And someone on Twitter, you know, I've had a lot of, a lot of people reach out. He says, man, I was really excited. And then I went to buy it and it was a hundred bucks. I'm not paying a hundred dollars for a ball marker. Well, look, it, it's a lot more than a ball marker. Okay. It's going to help facilitate the reading of the green. And more importantly than that, it's going to tell you where to aim it. So when you think about what you spend money on in golf, $100, no problem spending this money on drivers, three, four, five hundred bucks, six hundred, a lot of great equipment out there, three woods, irons, golf balls, golf bags. You know, golf, it, you know, it, there's a lot to spend when you, when you get into to playing golf. And it's become more affordable, but there's a lot of options in where you're going to spend your money. And you think about, okay, $100 for this thing. Yeah, I'm going to mark my ball with it, but it's going to basically tell me to, where, to aim every single putt. For, and for most amateurs, when you start getting that more right, that is going to be worth, what, two, three, four, five, six shots around? Is that worth 100 bucks? Is that what your driver gets you? Is that what that three wood gets you? Those are the questions you have to ask yourself because this is much more than a ball marker. And I've got it pulled up here. And the background that this thing comes from, and I was talking with Tim in length over the last 24 hours since the podcast, and he's really got me thinking about putting a lot more as Marcus Potter has done as well. He is now teaching here uh, in the studio. <clears throat> he's an excellent putting coach. He's been on the pod a couple times. I've thought more about putting probably in the last week than I have in the last two years. Now, I think about putting, but I would say my primary strength has been always more in full swing technique. How do I get my full swing moving in the right direction to develop and improve the probability of impact? Same with the short game. I consider myself a, a, a solid putting instructor, but I'm certainly not at the level of a Marcus Potter who is out there and studying uh, the technology and, and all of the data that's coming into it. And certainly not Tim Tucker in his background when it comes to caddying and reading greens. As I mentioned, Tim is one of the best greens readers probably ever. Um, he's studied vector. He has studied aim point. Aim point certainly is more mainstream and what we see these players doing now, using their feet and then using these fingers. Aim point express is basically how they, um, you know, kind of quantify how much break to play, or I should say, um, what's the word I'm looking for? Calibrate, that's it. Calibrate where to put the finger, and then that's going to tell them how much break to play. And all those things are, are certainly, we know, much more in line with the math and the science that was aim point when they came out with those books. That's exact. But you can't use those books and it doesn't really necessarily do a lot for the pace of play, right? So we have to make it more practical. So Aim Point Express came out, and it's good, right? Using your feet much more than your eyes. Your eyes are good, but your feet can be um, even better. And some can't use their feet because they can't necessarily feel it. And if that's you and you've tried, it's something that you have to work on. And then, and, and then for some, it's like, look, I, I get it. Like, you just can't. Use your feet. You've got to use your eyes. But your eyes can be helpful, right? Your eyes can see slope direction for the most part. Um, they can see it can see it better when it's looking more up 
So looking from the low side versus the high side, think about the blimp camera looking straight down. You can't see slope at all. I mean, TVs have a hard time, uh, TV production, the camera angles have a hard time showing slope in general on a golf course. And now we're seeing, you know, the walking camera guys, the guys that kind of start low and then pan up. And that gives you a better sense of the slope. And it's the same when you're reading a green, looking more from the low side. You can see it better. The one thing we know, I think, in, in teaching aim point over the years is that we don't see enough break usually downhill, okay, because we're looking more down. We don't see enough break. We usually don't play enough break as a result of that downhill. We normally don't play enough break on faster greens, okay? And these are the things that go into reading a green. We know, number one, slope direction. I got to find which way is the slope going? Which way is this thing tilted? Uphill, downhill, right to left, left to right. Number two, the severity of the slope. Is the slope a 1%, a 2%, a 3%, or a 4%? We're going to get a lot of 1%. We're going to get a lot of 2%. And we're going to get a lot of in-betweeners. You're going to get the occasional three and very, 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 very rarely are going to get the four. And then, of course, the speed of the green. That's number three. That, that, that dictates uh, how much break you're going to play. We know the faster greens, you have to play more break. And then finally, the, the length of the putt. The, the more time that a putt has going across those elements, the more it's going to break. So those are the things that we kind of factor in and we're making better decisions about. Our feet can participate in that. And as we start making those decisions, well, then this little tool here is going to help you line it up, right? And it's going to help you line it up to a specific spot and then from there hit it as if it was a straight putt. And of course, it's going to take the break and off it goes. And it's kind of hard when you just look at this and you're talking about it as we were with Tim and that little, and I would go back and and listen to it and he took us through this exercise where we drew this straight line straight line that would go from this black line right it would go to the hole and it'd be like 20 feet 20 foot putt straight that black line going right to that 20 footer and then you put a hole about 10 feet you put a hole about five feet and you put a hole about two feet and of course that black line just going right through all center of those holes and then those white lines represent, you know, kind of a half to a 1% slope. So if I'm going across a 1% slope right to left, I would basically use this. And you can see my cursor. I would use this white line just left of it. And that white line would it's coming at a slight angle from the black. And when it gets to that two footer, it'll be inside of it. And then when it gets to that five footer, it'll probably be outside of it. And when it gets to that 10 footer, it's going to be even more outside of it. And when it gets to that 20 footer, it's going to be even more outside of that. So it factors in that length and how much that break would increase based off that 1% slope on that length of putt. And then that red line is more of like a 2%, right? One and a half, two percent 2%. So that red line's more severe off of that black line, right? So that break is going to increase off that 2% slope. And then, of course, that white line just outside of that, that's 3%. And Tim's going to add a fourth line at 4%. But these three right here, one, two, and three, one and two, you're going to wear out. You're going to get that occasional three and then very rarely that 4%. So this thing is brilliant. Once you figure out which way the slope is, roughly what the severity of the slope is, off you go. Aim that black line right at the hole. Pick that line. Where's that line pointing relative to the cup up there, whether it's 2, 5, 10, or 20, aim the putter face right at it and hit it. And what'd you learn? I hit it right at it, and it broke more than I thought. Okay, well, we, we clearly probably missed the percent of the slope. We needed to play closer to 3 versus 2, or 2 closer to 1. Okay, so you start getting feedback. You start really creating a memory bank based off of a little bit more math, streamlining where you should aim the putter head. It's brilliant, folks. I'm telling you, it's brilliant. And um, I'm really excited to see where it goes. Now, Tim has agreed to give me the first 50. How about that? All right. So I have put this up on my website, travisfultongolf.com. You can go into the pro shop, 
and you will see this tool and I can sell the first 50 at a pre register, a pre order, click the link. The first 50 will be part of the first wave coming out of the Tim Tucker distribution. It's a hundred bucks. Go check it out. I think it's going to be one of the best hundred dollars you can spend on your game. And again, this is coming from a guy that is not a big swing device guy. He really got me thinking. I was very impressed yesterday. That was a great podcast. And um, I just wanted to kind of clear up a few things and go through it a little bit more. As I continue to think about putting and I continue to think about these conversations that I'm having with Tim, with Marcus, with Josh Gregory next week, the one thing that's becoming very apparent, I think, is that when you look at putting strokes in today's game, and we talk about the modern swing, like the modern swing today and the way that it's taught, like Mito Pereira is a great example of the modern swing, takes it back, change of knee flex going back, left wrist flat, club face square to slightly close, take on more flexion in the lead wrist and rotate like a madman, get the hell out of the way and let that club shaft exit back to the left. Minimal closure rate. It's the idea of, you know, getting the face prepared, square, slightly closed, not open, shaft pitch back in transition and rotate. Right? That's kind of what you see. And I, and I like a lot of that stuff, right? I mean, I, I gravitate to a lot of that stuff. And for those of you that do online lessons with me, you'll hear some of those components coming your way. The most important thing when you're taking online lessons or in-person lessons is, is that the teacher needs to be not only giving you great info, but they need to be putting it in the right order. That's the key. I've said that many times. You have to get the order right. I think over the years, I look back, you know, like, as a teacher for me, like what are some of my strengths as a teacher? Because I don't know everything. I don't know every little detail about 3D video, force plates. I know a decent amount, but there's a lot that I don't know. I'll continue to learn over the years. But I think one of the things that I've been able to do is to be able to look at people's moves, understand what their miss is, and then from there, put things in the right order for them to develop. Give them the tools in order, A, B, C, and things develop. The probability of impact improves, whether it's a full swing, whether it's a short game shot, and even putting, to I would say, to a large degree. So that's something to think about as you move into the season this year, whether you take an online lesson from me, an in-person lesson with me, or whether you take an online lesson or an in-person lesson with someone else. What is he telling me, and what is the order? And does that make sense? Does that order make sense for me to improve the probability of my impact, to not hit my miss that's plaguing me right now, and to hit more of the ball flight that I'm looking for? That's a good way uh, of looking at it. So we know what the modern swing is and the full swing, but what about putting? Like when you look at putting, to me, it's again, it's it's very, we know putting is very individualistic, um, but it's. Like, I think when you, like, when you really look at it, is it that much more individualistic from the PGA Tour standpoint than the full swing is? I mean, I see as many interesting idiosyncrasies in the full swing as I do in putting. You know, I mean, JT's left arm is one of the more uprights that you'll see. Um, Will Zalatoris' wrist angles, which Shaheen's going to talk about, you don't see that very often. Uh, Patrick Reed carries a lot of left wrist extension on the way down. He's been trying to get some of that out. That's not necessarily taught. DJ's bowed at the top. Matt Kuchar's left arms wrapped around him like Gumby. <laughs> so, like, there's, there's a lot of idiosyncrasies and different styles and individualistic things, however you want to label it in the full swing. I think as much as there is in putting, perhaps more. Gosh, you look at the grips in the full swing. I mean, Jim Furyk's like a double overlap. There's long, DJ's got this super duper long thumb. Spee's got a crazy ass weak grip. Webb Simpson's got a crazy ass strong grip. <laughs> so there's just, there's a lot of different things in the full swing too. 
individualistic. Don't say swing your swing either. Don't say swing your swing. Swing your swing. Swing your swing if, if you know, look, you're, you're happy with it and you're doing all the things that you want to do, right? And it's allowing you to fulfill what golf means to you. Swing your swing. But if you're missing it to the right and the left and top and you're not getting any better and I'm trying this, I'm trying, don't, don't swing your swing. Swing, swing my swing. <laughs> swing my swing. Let me get things in the right order for you so you can develop. So you, you look, you get it on the full swing. And it's the same thing in putting. But I think we just label putt. Ah, it's more individualistic. Okay. You know, just putt your putt. How come we don't say that? It's the same thing. And I think when you look at like the modern stuff in putting, what's becoming very apparent is that I think the modern stuff in putting is you see this putter shaft that has just a, 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 just a slight amount of shaft and just a touch. And then it returns to that angle. And it's in a ratio, back swing to forward swing, of a, more of a two-to-one ratio. Where the putter head goes back a little bit longer than it goes through. Okay, I will never forget. I, we were doing a show on Golf Channel years ago on Morning Drive. And... We were sitting around talking. I can't remember exactly who was all there. I think it was Damon Hack, Matt Janella. Anyway, it was back. I think Holly Saunders might have been on, on the set. I mean, I worked with Holly for the first year I was there. But we were all sitting there, and I, and I asked the question. I said, in a putting stroke, and because it, it really kind of started, I think, more apparent then. It's always been that way, but I think, like, the science now and what we understand, it's much more understood and discussed, and I would kind of say modern putting stroke. Although again, there's been examples before. I get that. Don't at me. And I said, look, do you in general, is it better to take it back longer to shorter through or shorter back to longer through? And of course, I think all of them, most of them said, yeah, take it back shorter and, and follow through longer. And the reason we say that is so we can accelerate. And I said, actually, it's the other way around. You actually take it back longer and shorter through. And when you do that, it actually allows you to load the speed more into the backstroke and then maintain that speed coming through, more, more cruise control. And at the time, this is when Jordan Spieth was just crazy winning everything. 2016, 17, making putts from everywhere, a crazy rate. And they asked me, Golf Channel, I said, can you do a breakdown on that with Jordan? And I did. And I showed him, I said, look, Jordan has a little forward press, a little shaft lean, returns it, but it's, further back, shorter through. And the upside to that is you can take the putter head back with a little more of a brisk type of pace and then let it just cruise control through. It just maintains its pace through to that shorter finish. And I like that little shorter finish for so many. And I just did an online lesson here, putting lesson, because it tends to return that shaft the same way, allowing you to hit it in the center of the face. I see a lot more of the putter head swinging up to that long, never-ending finish. It just like dissipates into the, to the air, up, 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 you know, waist high. But when I watch these guys putt, I see them like, boom, like the accelerate, the putter head's just kind of, it's not accelerating so much. It's like, it's like cruise control gliding through to a shorter finish. I call it the catcher's mitt, where he catches it, shorter, lower finish, and you tend to hit it with the returning shaft angle, and you tend to hit it more in the center of the face, and the ball comes off much cleaner much cleaner. So I think we're seeing that, and I would define that as more of the, let's say, quote, modern putting stroke. Now, there's there's other ways. Jason Day has more of an accelerated profile. He accelerates it through a little bit more. During that same show at Golf Channel back in, I can't remember, I think it was 17, when I did that breakdown with speed, at the end of the show, Lydia Ko was on the program, and they asked me to interview her. And at the time, Lydia Ko, I think, was the number one player in the world. And she came in, nicest person in the world. And we were looking at her putting stroke. And I said, hey, Lydia, what do you, what's going on with your stroke? And she says, well, I'd like to take it back a little shorter and then follow through a lot longer. <laughs> of course. <laughs> and, and Lydia is more of that one to two with more of an acceleration through impact. It's not wrong to putt that way. There's guys that have done it. There's women that have done it, obviously. Lydia Ko's a wonderful putter. Jason Day's a wonderful putter. But again, I, I think 
in, in at least comparing it, at least in my eyes, in my opinion, to what my preference may be, it's different. And I think it's more taut, longer back, shorter through, more of a consistent speed coming through with the putter head, shorter finish, more center contact, et cetera, et cetera. So just some things to think about as you maybe perhaps play some golf here this Memorial Day weekend. This has been fun, folks. I, you know, I, I wanted to jump on. I wanted to, uh, to take a look at this thing one more time. Go check it out, TravisHoltonGolf.com. Go in the pro shop. The first 50, he's guaranteeing us that we're part of the first wave. It's 100 bucks. I promise you it will make you a better putter. That's how confident I am. All right, good stuff. Stripe Show podcast. Webb Simpson, Stuart Sink, go get us a W. We'll be back next week. Shaheen, perhaps, fingers crossed, on Monday. And then I've got some new folks aboard on Tuesday. I'm really excited when we take a look at what's coming up on Breaking It Down, Best Bets. Uh, we'll be rolling them in on Tuesday. Lots of tour players and lots of top coaches coming on as well beginning with Josh Gregory next week, who's Will's out Torres's short game and putting coach. You're not going to want to miss it. Stripeshow Podcast. Have a great Memorial Day weekend, everybody. See ya.